All right, so today I'd like to talk about something near and dear to my heart, uh, product strategy, but more specifically, principled product strategy. So we'll, we'll really delve into what that means and really what the purpose of this talk is. How do you inspire action? Because at the end of the day, it's all about, it's about action, right? Like in order to create a, a, a phenomenal product, uh, you need to actually build the product. Uh, it's all about action at the end of the day. So how do we do that through product strategy that is not only principled, but is inspiring? All right, so just a little bit about me uh, before we jump into this. I'm Andrew, I work at LinkedIn. I'm on the growth team and specifically on the group team, I work on the My Network team. And so what we do is we help people connect to the right uh, network and nurture and build the right network so that they can be more productive and successful. Uh, how I got there, a uh, little bit of a windy road, very interesting, fun road. Uh, initially started off doing more philosophy, political science, and then moved into uh, nonprofits. And then I started working at an ad tech company and client facing roles, um, more consulting roles, and then moved into a sales software company uh, where I was an engineer. Uh, and hybrid PM at the time. Uh, that was my transition um, from just general uh, tech company to engineer and then starting to move a little bit into product management. From there, I worked at a ed tech company uh, called Sarago. Um, they do really cool stuff there. Uh, we built a product uh, that helps people learn uh, more effectively. Uh, some really interesting learning science uh, there if you're interested in looking up uh, some of that. Uh, and then from there, I moved into uh, the growth team at LinkedIn. Some of my hobbies, love art, love music, uh, traveling. I'm sure everybody loves traveling, but uh, yeah, it's a little bit about me. Cool. As I mentioned, uh, I work on the uh, My Network product at LinkedIn on the growth team. So specifically what we do is we help members connect to the right people and build the right professional network. So if you, if you actually just go to linkedin.com right now and then go to the My Network tab, you'll, you'll be able to see this experience. Um, you'll see a lot of different people recommendations, but also recommendations for uh, other things to follow. Uh, so like people who also follow product management, also follow these pages, uh, things like that. And all of that contributes to building uh, your network uh, as a LinkedIn member. Um, and ideally that network helps you be productive and successful. Awesome. All right, let's get into it. Let's talk about the agenda for today. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what is principled product strategy? Um, I'm very focused on the word principle here, um, as we'll dive into specifically what product principles are too. Uh, and, you know, what are even the benefits of having product strategy or having a principled product strategy? Uh, at the end of the day, it's about what problems are we trying to help solve for ourselves as product managers? Uh, so really want to deep dive into that. And then I want to focus on some case studies uh, to really illustrate how this happens. So uh, three benefits of product strategy that I want to deep dive into are consistency, alignment, uh, and focus, which can be also con interpreted as clarity. Uh, and then finally, how do we put that product strategy into action? Uh, at the end of the day, the strategy has to translate into a roadmap that then translates into execution, uh, however that looks for your team. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so what is product strategy? All right, so my very good friend and mentor, Vince Law, uh, has this awesome post called WTF is Strategy. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite famous now, I think, in the product community, so definitely check it out. But I think he does a fantastic job at putting like a one sentence definition on what strategy is. So the way that he describes it, is strategy bridges the gap between what you aspire to be and what you're doing. So uh, in that article is a really good uh, diagram uh, that's shown here. Uh, so you have your execution at the end of the day, right? That's, that's what your team is building. That's what you've been working with designers on uh, to start shipping that product. You've been working with data science to make sure that you're prioritizing the right thing um, and you're actually executing. But all that, uh, it needs to be bridged together with your company mission and your company vision, which is the aspiration, right? So in the beginning, we talked a little bit about inspiring action 
And when this bridge is shaky or <laughs> in worst case scenario, if this bridge of strategy does not, is not even there, then that inspiration piece gets really tricky. It gets really tricky because you really end up with an execution plan that is just pure rote execution. Uh, it can lead to, you know, like uh, loss of morale. It can lead to uh, just being inefficient, which we'll delve into a little bit more. Um, so just really the working definition that I want to use throughout this presentation is that strategy is a bridge between the aspiration and what you're actually doing on the day to day. So just to hammer this uh, point home a little bit more, um, I think we need to dive into what vision and mission really means, right? So there's, uh, there's a little bit of nuance when talking about the two. So vision and mission, uh, as you can see here, even in this diagram, you have the mission in front, the vision later. In other diagrams, you have the vision in the front, the mission later. But really at the end of the day, the difference is, is this. So the vision that you have for your product and your company really is the idealized state of where you want to be. So it's in the future. Uh, mission is more along the lines of what's happening today, describing the problem that you're trying to solve today. Uh, and then just to give you some examples uh, for LinkedIn, our vision is we, create, we want to create economic opportunity for every single member of the global workforce. And then our mission to go along with that is we want to connect the world's professionals and make them more productive and successful. So when we look at our vision statement here, it's more along, it's aspirationally where we want to get to, right? We want to provide this for everybody in the world. Uh, and then our mission's more, a little bit more grounded uh, along the lines of how do we do this? We do this by connecting the world's professional uh, so that we can make them productive and successful. So a little bit more grounding around the overall aspirational statement that we will link our execution to uh, through strategy. Cool. So if I really had to put it into, you know, like a one-liner, even more distilled. So the strategy represents the set of guide for your road mapping and execution task to ensure that they align with your mission and, and vision. So mission and vision, as we, as we mentioned before, is guidance for your overall strategy, that aspiration. You can really just stop there and then you wouldn't have a strategy or anything after that. Um, so it's really important to start moving down uh, this funnel or these steps. And you get into strategy, which is uh, principles plus decision. So what is even guiding the decisions that you're making? Those are your principles. And what are your decisions that you made uh, in order to drive your roadmap? Those are based on your principles. And those principles should reflect uh, what's in your vision and mission statement. And then once you have your decisions, then it starts getting a little easier, quote unquote, because uh, those decisions can then be transformed into actions and tasks that can be represented in a roadmap format. Then those actions become building the product, the actual tickets in your Jira, in your, uh, I think we used to use uh, different software. There's all sorts of different software now, like the actual actions or the tickets and the tasks. Uh, and then that eventually becomes the value that you drive for your users, uh, for the community that you're serving with your product. So succinctly put, strategy equals principles plus decisions. Okay, so now that we've laid down this formula of bridging uh, product vision and mission, uh, with action, you know, why, why do we want to do this, right? Uh, what are the benefits of product strategy? Uh, what problems does it solve? Uh, we're we're, we're going to get into some really interesting examples here um, because I think if we just lay it out as, hey, if you have product strategy, you can, it can lead to execution. Uh, that's great, but there are so many different ways that that gap shows itself in your day-to-day -day as a product manager. Uh, and so we're gonna, we're gonna jump into a couple examples here. All right, so first and foremost, benefits of even having the principles for decision-making. As we mentioned, strategy is principles plus decisions based on, the, based on those principles. The benefits are the following. Consistency. So that's not only just consistency of your product as a whole, so like the look and feel with experience, but really the process. So if you have, you have different 
team members switching in and out of different teams. You might have different changes uh, that are more around operational changes or uh, team member changes. You still have consistency if you have solid product principles. So this is both, as I mentioned, both consistency of the product itself, like what the experience is, uh, and consistency in the process of product development that comes from having solid product principles for your team. The second, my favorite, is alignment. So oftentimes uh, you'll have different competing priorities, uh, a lot of different teams you'll be working with uh, as product management is inherently collaborative. And so having solid product principles is especially helpful. In fact, I would say required <laughs> when working cross-functionally. Um, in order to just save a ton of headaches, really, at the end of the day. All right, so then the next point here is around having focus and clarity. So as a product manager, as, you, as many of you may know, uh, every day is, is kind of a whirlwind. It's, it's what we love. It's, it's a love-hate relationship. Uh, we love having so much going on. It's very engaging, but sometimes it can lead to a little bit of chaos. Uh, and that line is actually very blurry, right? Like some days it's, it's pure engagement. You're working on really tough problems and it can slightly veer into a little bit of chaos and ambiguity uh, when there's too much, too much overload. So in those moments, having a lot of focus and clarity is very important. Uh, and then having sound product principles uh, are really uh, helpful uh, in order to shift that chaotic energy and chaotic day into a more focused, and clear day. Um, we're gonna we're gonna jump into examples here, uh, and then finally for actually creating the roadmap and for actually driving uh, the execution of what's going to be built, uh, prioritization, stack ranking based on all of the above as well as impact and all those things. Having product principles uh, is really important. One thing that I want to point out here before we move on is that when we talk about execution. Uh, we like we can talk about it in a way that is very specific to uh, like, you know, pushing that product out, uh, executing in terms of actual engineering work, uh, actually shipping and things like that. But as, that, as you can see here, execution also means uh, execution around uh, aligning on initiatives, aligning on the process and how you want to do things, which ultimately do help make the shipping of the product and execution of the actual building of the product more efficient. So it's really, it's really interesting to see where the levers are for where you can uh, improve consistency, alignment, focus, whether it be in the operational flow, whether it be in the actual uh, building of the product itself. So just something to note there. Cool. All right, so we delved a little deep into why principles are important. Um, so I'd like to jump into some cases to illustrate each of those points. So for us as the LinkedIn My Network team, I'm gonna start there so that we can illustrate some of these points. For us, our principles are the following. And these might change, but at least for the time being, uh, these are our principles. So first, we wanna help members build and nurture the right network. So if you look on the page here, you have invitations, you have recommendations at the bottom, you have the ability to manage your network on the left-hand side. Everything that we do on this page should be around helping members build, whether that be you know, discovering different people to connect to, nurture, whether that be going back into the connections and then uh, reaching out again, uh, and forming the right network, which can be anything that helps them be productive and successful. So that's principle number one. Uh, principle number two is around helping members connect to the people that they know. So this really is helpful in enforcing uh, that we show the best quality recommendations, that we filter for the best invitations um, so that you're connecting to people that you actually know um, instead of uh, it just being uh, a little bit of a free for all. So that's our second principle. Our third principle is more around uh, the experience that we want to have simplicity and experience to minimize product debt. So these are just some examples of principles that we have on the My Network team, uh, on the growth team at LinkedIn. Uh, there's several others, but this is just the distillation of it. Um, so let's continue and look at some examples of how these can drive clarity, 
focus, alignment, and prioritization uh, when differing with di dealing with different scenarios. Let's go into a couple scenarios here. So the first case I'd like to illustrate is how having principles that can help you make decisions for your product strategy can drive consistency. So we once had a proposal come to us that, hey, what if we had content uh, on the My Network tab? So I, as the product owner of the My Network experience, uh, My Network discovery experience specifically, um, was given a proposal, hey, we'd like to show content on the tab to drive more discovery. Uh, we think that this would drive more engagement. Uh, our partner teams also showed through uh, data science that this would be a viable proposal for dri driving overall impact, right? Do we do this or do we not do this? So this is an example of where now, how does this fit in with the product strategy? How does this fit in with other initiatives that we worked on? How does this fit in with our future plans, right? How do we even approach this scenario? Uh, normally, one thing would be to look at impact, as we mentioned here. So yes, they've said that this would drive a lot of impact. Yes, they've shown that this would be the case. Does that mean that we should just do this, right? Cool. All right, so this is tricky, right? Because at least for me as a product manager, I love collaborating with other teams. Uh, I love helping out other teams. I love driving impact for the overall ecosystem. And so this would mean, this would be a really strong yes in general, uh, but that's, that's given those criteria, but that, that's how we would proceed with this. Because as a tab, as a platform, as a My Network team, uh, we had certain principles that were around creating a consistent experience, creating a consistent experience, creating an experience that uh, our members could expect to see from coming from the, to the net, my network tab. So just going back to our principles here. As you mentioned, number one is our, our platform, our tab serves to help members build and nurture the right network, right? So that's number one. The second is to help them connect to people that they know. And the third is to simplify the overall experience to minimize product debt. So if we look at this case, in order for this to work, it would have to A, help members connect to the right people in the right network to help them be successful. Uh, putting content on our tab does not fit with that principle, right? So already that becomes a conversation that's less about this initiative and it's more about the principles. So then now we can actually talk about the principles we can talk about like, whether or not this fits in with the principles or not, rather than talking about, are we doing this? Why are we not doing this? It is going to drive impact. So, you know, so like, let's talk about why we're not doing this from an impact perspective. So it becomes much more principled and then it leads to a more consistent experience because by saying that we want to make sure that every experience on our tab leads to another edge being formed, leads to network building, we can clearly say this is not something that fits in in terms of an experience standpoint. And that in turn also helps us with principle number three, which is providing a more consistent UI and consistent experience. Great. All right, so case two, alignment. How do product principles help us with alignment? And then how does that in turn help us drive our product strategy and drive execution forward? So in this scenario, the groups team came to us and said, hey, the groups team would like to drive more group join recommendations, uh, create more group joining opportunities. Uh, and the My Network tab seems to be a really good place to do this for a platform for discovery. So what this experience might look like is groups you may be interested in. Uh, as you can see here, we have things for iOS development, uh, future trends, things like that. How would I discover that as a member? Uh, the group team proposal was to put this recommendation module on the my network on the my network page. So even before we just begin the discussion, you can already see that this is something that would, uh, if we wanted to do this, a we would need to put it in our roadmap. B we'd have to start sizing it and scoping it uh, with their engineering team. Uh, there's just a lot of work that is needed. Uh, in order to even get this off the ground or even start thinking about getting this off the ground, right? So in a scenario like this, where we wanna talk about how do you inspire action? 
how do you lead uh, how do you lead decisions to uh, the right actions? Having alignment is super key, and having product principles that drive alignment saves you a ton of time, saves a ton of meetings, uh, and even design work and engineering work. So let's actually walk through each individual principle that I laid out here for the minute team for this scenario. So the groups team proposes putting more group join recommendations. Given our first principle that the My Network tab is a place where people come to build and nurture their network, this actually fits in quite well. It fits in quite well with the building portion as joining new groups is considered uh, building one's network, especially joining the right groups leads to potentially building out a really engaging, robust network uh, as each individual group has its own community. Um, and so that actually fits in really well with our first principle. Principle number two, around connecting to the right people, not directly related to this, but uh, it does fit in really well with the overall community forming and connecting to people that you may know in these groups as well. So there's a lot of potential there. And already we're starting to see some good alignment uh, between that group, that team, and our team. And so finally, our third principle is simplifying the experience, making sure that's a consistent, uh, consistent UI. Uh, as you can see here, even the proposal that they had uh, for how they wanted the experience to look like fit in really well with our pillar. So just going through each, those, those three individual product principles, there was very clear alignment, which then leads to very clear next steps, which are, hey, let's start scoping out this initiative. Let's start getting the designers to meet together from your team and our team. Uh, let's look at how our engineering teams would work to get this off the ground. So this is a good example of how having strong product principles fit in really well with uh, one's product strategy and helps drive action uh, through and through. All right, so the third benefit that we talked about is providing focus for your product team. As I mentioned, uh, product, management is a very, project man, product management is a very exciting uh, role to have. There's always new ideas, there's always new collaborations, uh, there's always uh, new strategies to pursue even. So how do you stay focused, uh, especially when there's different proposals and all these uh, new exciting ideas come up? So let's use an example. So for example, the profile team uh, and our team were working together. And again, these are not, exact, uh, these are not exactly accurate. They're just more to illustrate a point. But the profile team and our team started working together and talked about, hey, how about we create edge building connection opportunities on the profile page? as you do on your My Network tab so that we can drive more quality connections uh, to people you may know. So the first thing that you think about here is, okay, how does this fit in our existing roadmap? Does this, this is gonna change the way that we prioritize things? Uh, how do we even approach this problem, right? Because this to me is, it is a problem about alignment as we talked about in case number two, but it's really about focus. So focusing on the right problems, focusing on the right collaborations, how do we make this decision? How do we proceed forward with these conversations uh, with the profile team? So going back to our principles, does it help us A, help build and nurture another network, uh, help, help members build and nurture their network? Um, and then already what, what comes into play here is this is a specific team that is on a different page, right? So that's already something different. By putting these modules on this page, by improving these modules on this page, these connection modules uh, on the right side, does that help our core principles? And would this be a good collaboration? So with principle number one, does it help members build uh, and nurture their network? I think the answer is yes. So there's already alignment there and allows us to focus on that problem. So in principle number two, would this help members connect to people that they already know? The answer again is yes. So again, that really streamlines the conversation. Uh, and then third, consistency of experience. In this scenario, it actually doesn't matter as much because it's not on our pillar, it's not on our actual page, but we do want the experience to still be consistent even if it's on the profile page. The connection experience should be consistent on the profile page as it is on the My Network page. Um, so again, there's alignment there. So in terms of 
creating focus, uh, especially when there's all these competing ideas and different proposals for prioritization, uh, having product principles is really helpful uh, in making sure that this goes as quickly as possible into action uh, and some decision making uh, so that that helps the overall product strategy. Cool. So then what's the benefits as we, just taking a step back, as we mentioned in the very beginning, product strategies around having principles and then being able to make the right decisions based on those principles. So I think it's really clear what the benefits are of making decisions, you know, you can move forward. So I really wanna focus on what is the, what are the benefits of making the right decisions here? So one can, a product manager can easily make decisions uh, to drive the roadmap, but they may be the wrong decisions, right? So what are the risks of making the wrong decisions is another way to look at this as well. So the first benefit is that there's a ton of clarity for next steps for the team. A lot of times uh, your team may ask you, the engineering team, designers, everyone that you're working on uh, or working with together may ask, hey, what are the next steps and why are we doing this? You know, why are we building this module for the profile team? Why are we working with the group's team to put their discovery interface on our pillar? You know, why are we not working with the content team to put content on our pillar? Having clarity around why those decisions were made uh, is really helpful, of course, for communicating, but it's, it's just useful for driving the roadmap forward. So the second point is why, uh, second point is having confidence to build the right thing is another key benefit of making the right decisions based on your principles. So I think one of the worst scenarios to be in as a product manager is to be mid-flight building something uh, after you've made a decision and have low confidence in why that initiative is even being worked on. So having clear principles for making the right decisions uh, helps with increasing the confidence for building the right thing in the first place, uh, which in turn, of course, helps with clarifying what the next steps are for the team. Uh, the third point here is uh, by having clear principles for making right decisions, reduce the risk of becoming a feature factory. So what a feature factory is, is basically you're just pumping out features, you're just pumping out uh, these products just for the sake of delivering those features without a clear why. So if you have principles to back up every decision, you really reduce the risk of, uh, of running into that. And then finally, what's really helpful in order in, in having principles and making the right decisions is communicating. So it ties in really well with point number one, which is clarity for the team. But you want to be able to communicate why you're doing something uh, with confidence to, to everybody, whoever the audience may be, whether it be execs, whether it be the partner teams that you're working with, and again, whether it be the actual team, your internal team that you're working with, um, having clear principles that explain the decisions that you made that drive your product strategy is especially helpful when you want to communicate. So we talked a little bit about why it's important to have product strategy that ties mission and vision to action. We talked a little bit about how product strategy itself is a combination of the principles that you have for your problem space and the decisions you make based on the principles that you had. So let's actually talk about how to form your product strategy so that you can get all those benefits, so that you can uh, drive action uh, as well as possible. So there's a couple components uh, when it comes to product strategy. This is not a, this is of course not comprehensive and it's also not prescriptive. So every team may look a little bit different, uh, but from my experience, this has worked uh, the best in terms of defining product strategy. So I see it as three core components. So the first is an actual strategy doc, like having a doc that can be referenced, can be shared, that clearly states the product principles of your problem space, of your, of your team, uh, so that when there's any, uh, any questions or any, uh, any confusion around what exactly the strategy is, uh, one can very quickly refer to that strategy doc. So I think point number one is that having a strat product strategy is having a centralized doc that actually states all these things very clearly. All right, so number two is having the roadmap that 
illustrates the decisions that were made based on the principles in your product strategy doc. So on the right side here, this is an example of what a roadmap might look like. The thing is my, my roadmap actually doesn't even look like this. My roadmap personally looks like more of a Google doc, uh, Google Sheets. Uh, others may have it in Airtable. Uh, other teams may have it in, it doesn't even matter what the format is. It's the key point is that your roadmap should show the decisions that were made based on the principles in the doc uh, that you shared out. So any initiative that's being worked on, it should be really clear as to why that initiative is being worked on and what the principles were that drove those decisions. And again, the how is up to you. Uh, it can look cool like this. Uh, it can look like a, it could just look like a sheet, up to you. Awesome, so point number three is a more narrow down view of what the roadmap looks like. Uh, even though it's up to you to decide what your roadmap should look like, there are some clear components that you have to have. So one is just having clear next steps. So yes, decisions were made, but what are the next steps after, uh, after certain steps for an initiative? So for example, let's use the uh, group recommendation uh, initiative that was talked about earlier. Once we got alignment on creating that group recommendation interface on our pillar, because we talked about our principles, what are the next steps and what does that actually look like in the roadmap? So one example might be, well, A, we have to integrate with the uh, recommendation uh, API that's actually generating those recommendations, that's one. Next step after that, or actually even in parallel, is creating the UI to serve those recommendations. Next step after that is actually improving the recommendations that are being shown. So just step-by-step step having clear next steps, uh, which actually ties in really well with number two here, which is having clear milestones. So milestones are really important when you want to uh, move a project forward, move an initiative forward uh, in a very measurable way. So one example of a milestone for that group initiative that we just talked about is first having the MVP group recommendations show up on our pillar. So that's one clear milestone, right? Next milestone might be after we've done that, iterating in a way that shows those recommendations with better recommendations. That's another milestone. Uh, and then point number three is to just really tie those all home uh, with timelines. Uh, point number three here overall uh, is around just general project tracking, uh, execution, uh, and making sure your team uh, is on top of uh, the timeline that you set. But really the point, the broader point here is that your roadmap and all these individual steps, anytime there's a question around a step or like what the milestone is or what the next step is, the strategy doc and the product strategy should be defined in such a way that each step and each initiative can be tied back to the overall product principles, which overall tie back to your company product mission vision statement. All right, so moving on a little bit more, how do you even define uh, the principles uh, to, uh, to put in your product strategy doc, right? So if we go back here, point number one is have a clear centralized strategy doc for defining your principles so that you can get to this roadmap view. How do you define those product principles? Again, this is not as hard science. Uh, these are in a lot of, in some ways, it's just principles for principles. Um, but I found that three things help a lot when defining these principles, given that they're going to be referenced so much and they drive so much value for your team. Um, so it's three things. So the first is to be very specific. There shouldn't be ambiguity around uh, the principles. Uh, the point is to be crisp and clear. Um, so in the example that I showed, the My Network principles, um, members should, the My Network tab exists to help members connect build and, uh, sorry, the My Network tab exists to help members build and nurture the right network. So very crisp, very clear. There's no ambiguity around um, what they go to the tab for. Uh, it needs to be very specific. Um, it needs to be very precise. Uh, and this in itself takes several iterations. Uh, work with your team for sure on this uh, so that you get as precise and specific principle uh, in your product strategy doc. So the second point, is when you write the principles, they should be written in a way that can help make decisions and help prioritize. So what does it mean for a principle to be prioritization driven? It should be written with action in mind. 
So the question you can ask yourself when you write these principles are how will these principles help me with decision making and help drive action? So final point is that your principles should be concise. It should be quick and easy to reference and level set and reset anytime there's a problem or anytime there's a misalignment. Uh, this should not be a rambling essay. Uh, it should not be a long set of uh, different uh, descriptions as to what should be done. It should be concise for the sake of driving action and prioritizing. So just to summarize, uh, if you define these principles, it should be very specific. Uh, it should be very action-driven, prioritization-driven. Uh, it should be very concise. That you should be able to even uh, even read them off, uh, even be able to recite them from memory. Awesome. All right. So then, once you have your product strategy doc, you have your roadmap, you have your principles in that doc. How do you drive execution? How do you derive inspiration and energy from that doc? Right. Because these principles are just words written on a page. The strategy is just a doc. The roadmap is just a doc. How do you actually drive inspiration and energy, which then helps with the execution and the overall flow. So it should be really clear as to how your strategy, principles, mission, vision all fit in together. So this is, this is a little bit more art than science, I would say. Um, one should be able to look at, I think a good way to, to actually test this out is go to any single JIRA ticket, go to any single initiative that your team is working on and try to find how that ties into the product principles in your product strategy doc, and then how those tie into your mission value statement. So for example, going back to that group, uh, the group recommendation example, let's say I have a JIRA ticket that's literally for um, integrate group recommendation API into the My Network tab. Seems very cut and dry. Uh, there's no mission statement in there, right? So any person, any engineer, any, anybody who reads that should be able to derive the overall mission of LinkedIn from that ticket alone, if this is done right. So let's walk through it. So integrate the API, why? What's the principle for that? Well, our principle here is that we wanna help members build the right network on the My Network page. And by integrating the API into the My Network page, we can show group recommendations. By showing group recommendations, we give members an opportunity to join groups that they may not have known about, discover these new groups. And that helps with our overall mission, which is to help connect members on the platform so that they can be productive and successful. So I think a good way to test this connection, flow all the way up and down is to walk through it. Of course, you can't do this all the time, but the point here is that your product strategy should be so soundly built on your principles. And those principles should be so soundly connected to your mission and vision statement that if you wanted to, if you needed to, you could, be, you could take every single action and every single task and connect it to the overall mission and vision. So the purpose, so going to point number two here, the purpose of every action that's being worked on on your roadmap should be clear in answering the question, you know, how is my work meaningful? How is this meaningful and impactful to the overall mission statement? Uh, and so that's what we mean by deriving inspired action and energy. I think really what we're trying to go for here is that a lot of times you'll be working on a product, you'll be shipping product, and it may not feel uh, it may not feel like it's connected to the overall product mission and vision. And so being able to have that is very powerful in motivating your team, um, in reminding yourself and reminding your team as to why we're even building this thing. Um, and just really helping the overall product development life cycle as a whole. So finally, some caveats here. There are just some things that you're going to build on. There are just some things you're going to build. Uh, there are just going to be some things on your roadmap that have to be built that don't tie immediately with the vision. So some examples to think of here are tech debt, uh, infra changes, um, you know, changing a field on a model and things like that. Those are some caveats, but at the end of the day, can still be tied in. Uh, to your overall product strategy and product mission, um, but just some caveats to put there in case this exercise doesn't work as smoothly when you try it out for some of these items on your roadmap. Cool. All right, so the key takeaways are that overall product strategy is the bridge between your vision, vision and mission statements and the actual actions that you're taking to 
uh, develop that product and ship that product. And when you start thinking about it as that bridge, you start thinking about, all right, how do we make that bridge a good bridge, right? How do we make it a bridge that's solid? How do we make it a bridge that can be uh, referenced very easily? Um, and so the way to do that is by defining product strategy as a set of principles and decisions that connect the vision and mission and the action. And then so how do you define clear product strategy and principles? You really think about what benefit is it going to provide for yourself and for your team and for your broader team? Uh, and three core benefits are one, consistency, uh, two, providing alignment across teams, and three, really helping you focus so that you can prioritize the right things uh, and make sure that your roadmap is filled with exciting things that can help the overall vision and mission of the company. And then finally, a uh, key takeaway here is that inspired action and progress is directly tied. It's directly tied to how well your product strategy is connected to the vision and mission with the tasks that you're working with. So in order to have truly inspired action in your roadmap, it's really important that the strategy that you define based on the principles that you've defined, based on the decisions that you made on those principles are sound. And so the way to do this is really making sure that you iterate multiple times, make sure that you work with your team, make sure you work with the uh, cross collaborative partners to pressure test your principles, pressure test your strategy, so that when it comes down to actually implementing and doing those actions, building the product, there's no question as to why you're doing it uh, and, and really the why behind the overall uh, roadmap that you're working on. Cool. All right, that's it for today. Hope that this was helpful and uh, hope that, you know, at the, I hope that you can, uh, you have some key takeaways here that help you define your product strategy. And uh, I would say that a big takeaway from this is that you should be able to define product principles and put them in a doc, start sharing them out with your team. Uh, so yeah, thanks so much.